Hello everyone and welcome to Magical Me. I'm Jamie Mendez and I'm here with my weekly Moon Day Oracle message. And this is going to be a message for the collective for the week of May 16th, 2022. So I'm going to go into explaining what it is that you can expect here today if you are new to the Moon Day readings uh, in just a moment. So first, I just want to give it a chance to allow people to connect and see that I'm live and just check in on the quality of sound. I do also want to say happy blood moon, full moon, lunar eclipse, and Waysack to all of you. So <laughs> it's quite a mouthful. Uh, it was I'm a little delayed getting here today because probably to do with that energy, having a bit of some uh, technical issues. So I want to make sure that everyone can hear me okay, how the quality of sound is. Hey, Lynette. Hey, Annie. Hi, Dawn. Welcome. Thank you so much. Tell me that. Just re-plug my mic in just in case. I'm also very low on battery, so I'm going to do my best to move through this as quickly as possible, yet as efficiently. <laughs> it just figures is Mercury in retrograde, right? And it's my bad for not checking my tablet in advance. <laughs> Oh, happy moon day, goddesses. How are you? How are you feeling under this very interesting and intense energy? Hi, Carolyn. Welcome. Thanks for being here. I'm going to go ahead and share this as well while people are connecting and seeing that I'm live. Hopefully that part will go well. So it has been quite an interesting weekend. How have you all felt under this energy? Uh, it's really interesting because I'm seeing or hearing more so like two different waves of experiences with it. And you know, that doesn't mean anything. That's not good or bad. Um, but it is really interesting to see uh, how people are uh, receiving this energy or what it is um, triggering <laughs> within our lives. Hey, Jillian. Welcome, love. Hi, Laura. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Gonna find this. There we go. You know, that doesn't mean it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I'll get it. All right. Hi, Amanda. Welcome, goddess. Thank you so much for being here. It's so late for all of you over in the UK, but thank you so much for being here and tuning in with me. Dawn says, yes, intense. I feel like peanut butter. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Lynette says, girl, you ain't got enough battery for me. <laughs> I love you. You're hilarious. <laughs> awesome. Well, yes, it, it is quite interesting. So before we get into all of that magic, um, I'll just go ahead and explain what I'm doing here for anybody who might be new to Moon Day. And then I will go into um, any news and announcements. Hi, Eleanor. Welcome, goddess. Thanks for being here. So uh, every Monday, I do try to go live around 4.30 p.m. Eastern time uh, to bring forward a message for all of us as a collective and really what we most need to know. I do this utilizing my own intuitive abilities as well as oracle cards. Now, these are not personalized individual readings here. They are a generalized reading for all of us as one to really give us that awareness and heads up of what the energy is going to look like moving into the week and how we can best work with that energy or move in divine flow versus having no awareness and really just kind of being knocked around by it. So having that awareness does uh, give us a bit of that uh, added oomph, if you will, to uh, really make any changes, work with that energy, apply the information and the wisdom. 
So I will be doing that in, in one moment. Uh, but before I do that, I'd like to go over any news and announcements that I have going on here at Magical Me or at Oracles of the Light, which is my sister business. So hi to all of you just popping in. Amanda, Laura, welcome goddess totally in mush at the moment oh my goodness Laura welcome thank you all for being here I'm so happy you could be um, so with that said really going back into the news and announcements uh, there's not a whole lot to announce other than if you are in person or I should say local <laughs> to the oracles of the light or uh, my area, Phillipsburg, New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania area. I am teaching, uh, the deadline is tomorrow. I'm teaching a Usoi Reiki level one class in person this Sunday, May 22nd. The event has been created on my page. Uh, if you're interested, just send me a message and I'll get you all set up with what you need to do in order to sign up. Also, a Reiki Level 2 class is also being offered on Sunday, June 5th. The deadline to register for that is May 25th, I believe. So you do have a little bit of time there. Uh, but if you're interested, again, this is in person only. However, I do offer Reiki online. Uh, I have pre-recorded these classes and put them in a private group on Facebook. So if you are ever interested in doing that from a remote location that is not local to me, you absolutely can do that. Just send me a message and I will get you the information as to how to go about signing up for that. And then we also do schedule a private one-on-one -on -one, uh, Reiki attunement. So that is actually done after you've watched the classes in your own time. Okay. So with that said, let me see if there's anything else going on. Cosmic Oracle has stopped taking uh, on new members until the end of the month, where we will open it up again for the month of June. Anybody who was not able to attend our in-person uh, Cosmic Sound Bath on Saturday, we will be offering that audio recording for purchase. If you are interested, I have not gotten a chance to put it up yet, but if you're interested in purchasing that audio from this past Saturday's Eclipse Blood Moon uh, Pleiadian Gateway Sound Bath, please shoot me a message and I'll get that over to you. Um, so you can go ahead and listen to that on your own. It was profound and quite unexpected magic. So yes, that is going to be $22 if you're interested in purchasing just the audio for that. Okay. Oh, let me see. Is there anything else? Aha. So the other thing is with the energy of this eclipse, it is, and I talked about this last week on Moon Day, it is so powerful in the sense that it is, again, pushing through the collective karmic node uh, in the south node, if you will, in the sign of Scorpio, which is pushing us all through that womb of uh, the cosmic death as well as that rebirth energy. So pushing us through with that, the womb in itself is quite powerful to connect with and work with. And it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, even for a man, we do have what is called ahara, and that is the it's from about the sacral chakra area where that energy uh, really we still can work with that sacred creatrix, that point of creation, inspiration, but also it is the connection back to the cosmic womb as well to the void, and this is where all things release back to, and where all things are birthed once again. So working with that womb energy, I still have uh, offering my red rose healing meditation and it is working with the energy of Mary Magdalene and again it's red rose energy is so connected to the womb and any patternings that are outdated, that are traumatic, um, that are ancestral, uh, all linked into the energy of the womb, anything to do with blocks to abundance, uh, anything to do with blocks to uh, relationships, because the red rose is also the embodiment of the sacred lover archetype. So anything to do with that as well, this red rose meditation is quite powerful for that and it is so perfect for the energy of this full moon. So you can still work with that. It is an audio recording that you do on your own time. It is $22. If you're interested, just send me a message and I will get you the link to join. I also have a private group for anybody who is interested in my journey with the rose healing through meditation uh, called the Temple of the Roses. So if you're interested in that as well, send me a message and I will get you there. Okay. I think that's it. So yeah, again, like I said, that red rose, perfect. If you're looking for a sacred ceremony to do in this full moon energy, 
that is the perfect energy to work with. So again, I uh, can't say that enough. Hey, Keisha. Welcome, lovely. Thank you for being here. Oh, yes, Amanda. If you're interested, you let me know. The sound bath. Oh, you know, the audios are wonderful. They're never as amazing as what it is like to be in person. I'm sure you know that. But still, you get the energetics that are like inscribed within uh, that also, you know, in the audio and the playback. So it's there for anybody who is interested. Carolyn, welcome. Okay, so I think that is it. Karen, hey, welcome, love. Thank you for being here. Happy Moon Day. All right, so with that said, let me go ahead and get into this. So before I go into the Moon Day message, and I'm doing my best to move on time, so I apologize if I'm talking fast. I was a slacker and did not plug in my <laughs> battery to charge here on my tablet, so I am holding out the time, doing the best I can with that. But uh, how have you all felt with the energy of this eclipse? Because, you know, I noticed that there is, um, there's kind of like two different waves happening where, you know, some people seem to just unfortunately be being like pummeled by it. Um, and then on the other hand, some people are kind of like just like flying through it. I do really feel like it has to do, it's not a good or a bad thing, and neither, neither or. Um, because no matter what, we're all feeling it. We are all being pushed by it. And not to mention, it's not just today or over the past weekend with the buildup of the energy. Um, it's not just that. You know, this is a, a window that is opening that is going to work with us through uh, the next coming months until October, where that is going to uh, pick up again with the eclipse season once again in the same uh, zodiac access Taurus Scorpio so it's you know just because you might feel like you're sailing through it right now you know it doesn't mean that it's not working to move things uh, to you know break away from things that are no longer serving you is as is the energy of Scorpio which is really all about transcendence and there's no sign like Scorpio that cannot uh, reinvent themselves over and over and over and over again. It is like the shamanic sign that does work with that, again, that death and rebirth. So I have noticed personally that my, um, my energy has felt super magical, you know, like, magical me. I felt super motivated. I felt very inspired. I have had some moments where some shadowy like thoughts have come up uh, and some emotions and I was able to kind of like address them right away. I didn't suppress them. I didn't push them away. I didn't ignore them. I just understood where they were coming from. But I also looked at what those emotions and even the circumstances attached to those emotions were facilitating within me. So that's been interesting. I have had quite a bit of deep healing going on in my dreams. And in my dreams, they seem to be much more shadowy than what is happening in the um, you know, actual waking life or physical where in my dreams, I'm having shadows come up for me to confront and I'm doing so in a way that specifically addresses like, um, like communication and the way that I'm communicating or the way that I feel like there's a lack of communication. So that also can be colored by mercury retrograde, I'm sure. Um, but it's also feeling very cathartic in the sense that I, you know, maybe for some of us that are having these amazing, uh, that are feeling so amazing during the day, that during our dream states, we might be doing the intense part of it, um, where, like I said, it's intense, like, it's like full on arguments sometimes happening in these dreams or circumstances being revealed in the dreams. And it's kind of like the pink elephant in the room that needed to come up and come out. And I'm dealing with that in the dreams with the people that are, you know, close in my life. Um, that is not, you know, like it's not coming up. It's not happening in the light of day, but it almost feels like it doesn't need to, because what's happening in my dream state is the, the healing work is occurring then. And so as everything is first in that subconscious or in the spiritual realms, it will eventually trickle into the physical, but maybe by then the way that it does ripple into the physical is that it will be, 
uh, much more smooth and, you know, a bit, basically like a very easy transition through, if that makes any sense. So just something to be mindful of for those of you who might be experiencing that as well, or even if you're experiencing it in your thought forms versus in the actual physical. Um, so something that could be coming up. This is a great time for meditation work um, because this is really going to help us to sift through and sit with because it's so important to remember that there is no escaping when it comes to eclipse transformation. And we're not meant to. It's meant to facilitate our own healing and rebirth. So it's important for us to really sit with these energies and allow them to be shown to us. One thing that I talked about over the weekend with the sound bath was that the, uh, the, when it comes to a lunar eclipse, it's slightly different from a solar eclipse in the sense that the way that this happens is the earth and the sun come together in an alignment that actually blocks the sun's light from hitting the moon, which then just creates this orange shadow upon the moon. And so that's showing us that that shadow is what is being directly impacted into or directed into our cores. So it is showing us our shadows, our subconscious. And these are things that are linked into not only our own individual karmic cycles and patterns that are outdated that are ready to be released and healed so that we can transcend and move into our own paths, our own a higher calling and reason for being here and our own higher journeys, but it's also working with us through collective, a collective pattern that is playing out as well and helping us in that regard. And uh, so, hi, Laura. Hi, Rob. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Donna, welcome. Sorry, y'all just popped in. Just saw you. Pink elephant dream time is so busy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so yeah, you know, it's so important to sit with that and, and just really work through anything that's coming up. And of course, it doesn't have to be shadowy stuff. This could be, there's a lot of ener uh, energy around working with ancestral patterning, working with karmic patterning in the sense that it's past lifetimes. I myself just had with the beautiful Amanda Gibbs, who is tuning in right now, uh, I had a past life regression and it did, it was nothing shy of amazing. And that was actually scheduled like weeks and weeks back. Um, so it happened this week as we built up into this full moon eclipse energy and uh, quite powerful healing that came forward. Things from different perspectives that I, uh, and I'm somebody who automatically regresses. I work with my past lives and these were things that came up that I wasn't even aware of. On another hand, I've got star lineage coming forward at the same time to reach out and connect with me to help me step into more of my higher consciousness and more of my soul's purpose here and what I'm meant to do. So yeah, Amanda Gibbs, please check out her page. Um, amazing at what you do, lovely. So thank you so much for that. Hi, Rose Maria. Yeah, so there is a lot coming up. This is a great time to be working with past lifetimes, a great time to be working with not only, like I said, in a sense of what needs to be healed, but also what was beautiful to me was an unexpected connection with a star lineage that started to make itself known to me to come forward to help me again ascend. It's one thing to let go and release those things that have been holding us back, but then we've also got the extension of what's being, uh, you know, held out to us to help pull us up through that doorway, through that portal of the eclipse into our divine pathways, into our divine calling. So quite a, a, a beautiful time. And again, if it doesn't feel beautiful for some of you, it's okay, guys, this is part of the process. Just sit with that. At the same time, there's so much opportunity with the, what is coming up in your lives. Um, again, for things that need to be released and let go, it's important to not hold on to them, to let them go, to, to let them go with love and just move gracefully through these processes. And it's okay to feel them and to go through those processes of the emotions that are attached to that as well, but don't build a house there. It's important for us to then remember that this is happening to expand us into more of our limitlessness, more of our potential, all right? At the same time, today is a celebration known as Waisek. And I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, uh, but it's actually believed to be either Buddha's birthday or his birthing day, which is like his, uh, his enlightenment 
at that time or his ascension time. At the same time, it's also believed that this particular uh, node energy or the, 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 yeah, with the nodes are currently in the North Node and the South Node was the same exact alignment at the time of his birth. So again, I'm not sure if that's his actual literal birth, if it's meant to be his enlightenment, but either way, Buddha represents illumination, enlightenment, and ascending into higher consciousness and leaving the ego behind. So again, just all of these wonderful opportunities this week coming in with this eclipse energy, whether these situations might feel tower-like or not, beautiful opportunities for us to find illumination and enlightenment and take that and allow it to carry us into the next chapter. Okay. Oh, you are so welcome, Amanda. All right. So that I'm certain was part of the Oracle message that wanted to come through. Um, I felt necessary to talk about all of that, but I'm going to go ahead and pull our card now anyway. All right. So feeling really called to work with the gods, the goddesses, gods, and guardians oracle cards. And these are by Sophie Bashford. So before we do that, I'm just going to ask everybody to come into or invite you all into sacred space with me now. So if you want to just take a moment, if you can safely to just close your eyes and try to detach from your surroundings and just take a nice cleansing breath in through your nose. And just allow all tension within your body, all stress, any thoughts to just fall away. Take another deep breath in. And as you release, again, just allow all attachment to thought to just fall away. Finding yourself coming into the eternal now, into the present moment. Again, one more deep breath in. And as you release, just drop your mind down into your heart space. Coming deep within your sense of feeling and nowness. All right, you can open your eyes. And with that said, we ask for guidance and assistance for the energy of the coming week for the collective good for May 16th, 2022. Sticking. Ooh. Okay. Aha. We have the Greek god Apollo, and it says divine messages. I love it. I love this very, very much because speaking of past lifetimes, one of mine was as an oracle of Delphi, and uh, Apollo was the god that the oracles uh, channeled his messages to bring forward assistance, guidance, healing for uh, for the land, for the people. Um, so that, that in itself is quite fascinating. I love that. Um, so obviously you see this, what looks, could be a sun in the background there, but I'm going to go with the energy of the, uh, this, a lunar eclipse, that blood moon energy coming forward. And what's coming forward with him is that he is revealing to us that this is a very powerful time for us to open, to receive divine communication, to receive divine inspiration, whether that be through synchronicity whether that be through literal connecting into your higher self or connecting into your, your angels, your guardians, even past loved ones, um, whether this be through meditation, whether this be through your dream state, there is an absolute, I should say, and I don't even like to say the word need, um, but there is a huge necessity for us to sit with this energy and 
allow ourselves to receive any wisdom and inspiration that is coming through. With that said, I'm, I want to really touch on the fact that once again, I'm drawn to, for one, for a second, these little symbols that are in the background here, I was really drawn to the fact that at first I felt like they were constellations I was looking at. So it's drawing our attention back to the stars once again. Pleiades is also opening their gateway. Um, I just want to try to plug my charger in everybody one second because it just low battery. Great time to also reflect on that in itself that it's time for us to recharge under the energy of this moon being so intense, absolutely creating exhaustion for many of us who have said that. And so this is a time where we're being filled up. We're being depleted and being filled back up. So just apologize, everybody. The background's not going to be as pretty now, but okay. All right. So uh, Rosemary, his hair looks like yours. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> so Interesting too, he's got the harp necklace on and the harp always reminds me of the harp of Lyra um, within the Lyran constellation. So again, it's a, a deep message for us to connect with our star lineage, our star family, and those beings of light that might consist and make up our families of light to receive more of that wisdom of what we most need to know, what we're being called to work with or move more into. Now, as I was saying, Pleiades also, uh, every year on the 16th of May through around about the 24th of May, Pleiades aligns with our sun. So our Pleiades sun itself, one of their stars known as Alcyone, is their uh, it's their sun, but it's more of like our spiritual moon. So that's also not a coincidence. So the spiritual moon coming close into alignment, and that will peak on the 20th of May, coming close into alignment with our sun. Our sun is connected into our solar plexus. It is connected into our, our willpower. Our, it is our core. It's our sense of vitality, of renewal. Like I said, we're being depleted to be restored, to let go of all that has prevented us from truly seeing, truly feeling, truly embodying who we really are at our core. And so as that uh, spiritual sun of Alcyone, which technically is more the spiritual, our moon energy, um, aligns with our sun, it's directing that energy into our core to help build us back up, to help restore us to more of our true light. So again, that can, that's going to be different for all of us, um, but a really powerful opportunity for us to connect with the Pleiadian energy as well, not just solely, uh, you know, with our own, you know, our own star guides, um, but also a wonderful time to sit and connect with uh, that Pleiadian energy. I was specifically called to mention Lyra. So for some of us, it's also going to be Lyra, but you know, a lot of the times the star Star connections actually work together. So, for example, you've got the Lyran beings that are from Sirius. You've got some energies that are on Venus that are also from uh, Lyra and, you know, so on and so forth. So, great time to sit and connect, to open up, to allow yourself to receive. Um, I hear, like, some of us have been asking, you know, what's my next step? Where do I go from here? And while you might, I'm, I'm almost feeling like there's this massive... Um, cloud, but not a cloud in a negative way. It's like this massive um, ideas, inspirations, or concepts that you want to take forward, but it feels like you're, you're almost missing. There's too much illusion or cloudiness around the next steps to take forward. This is the energy you will receive it under. So again, take that time to honor yourself, honor your energy levels, and even if you do feel like you could run a marathon, okay, honor that too, but Give yourself the opportunity to sit in silent reflection to allow yourself to receive and considering that we are uh, experiencing at the same time uh, Buddha's birth week or birth energy here. Um, you know, Buddha's always represented as like you see him meditating. So again, wonderful time to meditate and open yourself up to receive. Okay. Obviously, use your discernment when connecting with energies, as we do have quite a bit of chaotic energy being stirred up as well at the same time. But 
uh, you know, that's common sense. Everybody use discernment and make sure that you're connecting with only that which is here serving in the highest love and the highest light. Okay. All right. So thank you all so very much for being here. Um, I will be sharing our mudra message as well for the week. I'm going to post that separately in a video on my page. Uh, I'll be doing that shortly as soon as the video is done airing here live. I want to say thank you all so much for being here with me and for holding space with me. And I hope that you have a magical rest of your Monday as well as a magical week. So much love and blessings to you all.